I don't know why I am bigging it so much. They switch sides on me, so I'm flipping stuff around. All right, here we go. All right. All right, they're all ready. We're ready. We 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 are as ready as we're gonna potentially be. So we're coming to Dragonshire, which is my. F I don't know. It's either my favorite or my second favorite. It's a toss up between this map and Cursed Hollow. So I oh. love this map just because I think it really demonstrates how well a team can play on the micro and macro because you know it has the standard solo lane it has the standard four man rotation no matter what you pretty much can't get away from it unless you three two which again just shows how strong your macro is so right. I, I uh, but uh the one thing to be said on this map is i do think that the double support is actually very effective so we will see what sort of comps that we get yeah see for as far as that goes for me it's cursed hollow is like demonstrate your ability to macro like your decision making but dragon shire is one of those elusive like nuanced maps where it's like there's so many different right options to take yeah that that, that i i agree with you we and oftentimes see... sorry go ahead. no go ahead. oh so oftentimes on this map too you do see level 20s picked up for both teams so you actually get to see that level 20 team fight which is always so exciting yep. um yeah, you were just gonna mention the Ariel ban. I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Oh wait. Yeah, no. It, it was it was a firm handshake on the right. They yep. they've been banning Ariel all all evening. Yep. I got the names right. So they are very consistent with their bans. Um, we'll see. I, we saw the Dahaka ban last time, I believe, right? So I'm not sure if we'll right. see it. Dahaka's fantastic on this map, obviously, and he stalls out the map um really really well. So if they don't want to play it, then okay. So they do see the Lucio, or Blank decides to ban out the Lucio. This is Zeratul's, like, one of Zeratul's best maps. I wonder if we'll see it come through. I, I'm i a little surprised to see the Lucio ban. I mean, yeah, me too. They, they, they stayed in the game because of Lucio. And I didn't see an instance where Lucio got first picked. I figured it'd either be Falstad or Zeratul based off of what we've seen a firm handshake all night so now they've taken arguably the reason why they won the first game like conceptually away from themselves that it's an interesting choice so honestly man i'm saying it right now uh blank needs to pick up zeratul unless they want to play against it because firm handshake opened with the false dad last time they played zeratul and they two three the the zeratul so yeah, they they're gonna have to pick it up if they don't want to play against it i hope to the sweet lord above that we get to see <laughs> that false dad's there tool on dragonshire for firm handshake because honestly if if uh, they get that draft i think we're gonna see a game three. Oh lordy lord can i get an <laughs> amen 14 seconds we see the haka show up no rubber ducky that upsets me a little bit malfurion's gonna get snapped up though and uh blank is playing a dangerous game <laughs> There Let's was go, zero <laughs> delay. No. Zero delay. They're like, we'll, we'll take all the other seconds to, to see who we want for our third. But we're making a statement. We're locking yeah. in there. Like, levels was just like lock in. Like, immediately. Uh, instant. Yeah, for sure. Um, the Dahaka Malfurion is fantastic because Malf dominates that four lane, or four man. And Dahaka is really, really strong in the solo as well. And also provides the teleport pressure. Um, so the global versus the global plus the false dad, I'm loving it. But of course, uh, as I said before, false dad plus Zeratul works very well into that solo Dahaka. Um, we, when we saw it on Towers of Doom, we didn't see, um, levels pressure the Dahaka as much as I would like to see him do it. So if he was listening to that other game, man, you pressure that Dahaka, make sure he doesn't even come out of his, his, uh, gate. So, uh, and the Muradin actually picked up Muradin very strong in the rotation. The Candy Crush Saga shows up in the form of Muradin as we go into the second band phase. I mean, I, I it's hard for me to get past his Zera tool pick, man. We've seen what levels can do on Zeratul all night. We've seen what these Steves can do on Falstad. If you're blank and you won that game by the thinnest of margins, you were just playing a dangerous game by giving your opponents two of their comfort picks. It, it's it, that it's confidence. You fight us at full power, but I don't know, man. Bands. Bans, bans, bans. You got to so, take a support away, right? I know some really strong stuff that they could ban, uh, but I don't really want to talk about it just because it's stuff that 
uh, my team it, plays. It, it's, yeah, yeah it's so fine. we'll stay away from that. But I actually want want to see. Oh, hmm. Okay, they bent off the Regard. Regard's really strong just because of his control on the bottom side of the map, right? There's the two siege plus the neutral bruisers. Uh, so he's able to solo all of those camps. Um, so really, really strong on this map in particular. Plus, you know, the, the slowing totem between the mid and bottom lane is really strong. And the Varian band out for a firm handshake. Interesting. I mean, as far as double support goes, if Blink wanted to be really rude, they could take, like, Uther right here. And it would just be like, what support does firm handshake go with yeah. in this situation? Because, I mean, Uther, I feel, is pre Uther or Brightwing, but Brightwing, you know, I don't know if that's really going to be what you want right now. No, definitely not. Hey, you know, it's good into Zeratul, but I honestly, I would love to see Blank play something standard right now because uh, they have every variable set up so far. They have the Dahaka, they have the Malfurion. They can, they can do extremely well in the standard because at this point, Firm Handshake pretty much has to force the 3-2. So, like, they have to put uh, Falstad top against the Dahaka, obviously, and mm. then kind of threaten with the Zeratul ganks. Um, so, no matter what, off of the 1-3 the from Firm Handshake, they're basically saying, like, yeah, Ooh. we we see this 4-man, and we're going to we're gonna dominate you with it. And we see the Cassia and Nubarak. I think Cassia is extremely strong on this map. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Blank rounds their comp out with Lili after the Cassia pickup, depending on these last two heroes. Okay. Zeratul actually struggles against Lili in a lot of situations. The blind, um, if if they can get around the, the Q damage from the initial burst, I mean that is levels of Zeratul. But yeah, if you if you want to enable a hero like like Cassia, you go for another another blind, and and the best options are gonna be Johanna, which that'd be triple warrior, that'd be a little wild or Lili. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few heroes available for Blank to pick up, but wondering what Firm Handshake you're going to look to do. I assume that they're looking to capitalize off of the Void Prison. So we have the False Dead, which isn't a crazy amount of damage. So I'm assuming a mage of some sort, but I don't think it's the Li Ming because of the Anubarak, obviously. Could be Jaina, could be Mernin. I mean, uh, is it Kael'thas. Okay, so there is the KT Uther. I was going to say Chromie Uther, but Kael'thas is much safer and uh, probably just better in this case. Uh, I mean, Chromie could have potentially done some work. Set yourself up for an interesting uh, forward positioning. You're gonna, you'd have a stealth hero and a hero that hangs way in the back, like yeah, Falstad and and Uther and Murden, Like you kind of leaving us out here, but. Hmm. I mean, with all the supports ban, it, it, the the pick almost had to be Uther. Yeah, so I get that. Pretty much. Um, now I'm assuming a mage is going to come out. There's the Li Ming. Uh, I was going to say it was the Zarya because they could have just completely cheesed the four man with the Cassia. However, mm -hmm. um, Li Ming is the much better response over Zarya because <laughs> triple warrior against KT. Like good night. You know. Kala, I see an iteration of reality. Divine Storm, right? Yep. Void Prison, Divine yep. Storm right after. Double mm -hmm. Flame Strike at 16. Like, it could get real tough. I mean, I've blank. seen it. I, I really, I have seen it, and that's so much follow-up damage. Uh, I, I can definitely see that happening, especially if they get a really sick Void. Like... And Cassia dies to that sort of burst damage, and if she's stunned, mm. guess what she's not doing? Walking. So guess what she's <laughs> not procking? Her passive. Right. And I mean, that's all the time in the world for heroes like Falstead, Zeratul, and Kael'thas to do what they do best. And I mean, it's also a lot of ability damage in general. I, I would imagine we'd see Maidstead. So that passive trait from Cassia stands getting negated this game. Yep. I do not want to see a poke build coming out from Cassia. I want to see the auto attack. I want to see uh, the charge strikes um, and just trying to increase their value early game and just try to get a lot of damage dealt early. So we do see uh, Thunderstroke. Um, so not the build I was looking for, but, you know, these guys are the professionals, aren't they? Or the amateurs. And we'll see. Over on the left side, we got Blank looking to close this set out. Hayo's on Malfurion. Dr. Frost is going to be on Cassia. Balling Beast. Playing dodgeball with Lee Ming, Grizz is on a new bracket again, and Aurag, you are rounded out on Dahaka. 
And on the right, in red, is Firm Handshake. We got Vestige playing that Murd, and Deceives on Falstad, Kobe21 on Uther, Necromongers playing that Kael'thas, and Levels on that Void Monster Zera tool. And to the surprise of no one that's seen him in action at all tonight, all five members of Blank hanging out in the mid lane, Ball and Beast goes fishing, nice drag. Takes Vestage out of position. Dwarf Toss is going to be there. Follow-up damage could have been a thing. You show that kind of burst damage on Murden, you got to feel good about your ability to get takedowns. See, I like this uh, this uh, decision not to face this four-man for a firm handshake. They decided to stack everyone bot, take that camp, and now Zeratul looking at that um, rotation from mid to top. But the dig comes out, so it's not happening. And look at this pressure top. Yeah, I mean, this has been a hallmark of what they like to do early on. Firm handshake, they avoid the 1v1, and then they catch you in rotation. But Tahaka doesn't have to worry about all that. But now look at this. Blank is hanging out, seeing who wants to dare rotate down. They're showing, they know how to play the Jaws music too. Mm, so a little bit of an engagement attempt there from the Anubarak, but nothing follows up. Uh, both these teams just kind of, you know, testing the waters, seeing what's going on. Stormbolt goes in, see the follow-up damage down in the bottom lane, Ball and Beast, the, the, the mage matchup, no trades so far, Kobe21 will pick up the bottom shrine, Falstad shows up top, could get the run on the top one as well, Dr. Frost and hey, you want to try to pick up this bottom one for any early Dragonite shenanigans show up, but the Haka Falstad, the matchup continues. Very true, both of these um, shrines picked up for team blank but it, they're definitely not gonna be able to capitalize on it right now a little bit of an experience advantage going over the firm handshake and here comes the rotation on to dahaka the damage from zerto follows through but just nothing further he's just gonna look to be uh at this top lane they get as much damage as possible in on dahaka force out the well that's not a takedown but that's starting to chip away at blank yep. the next time that happens dahaka's gonna have to hearth back you know he can burrow back again anyway but that's how you start to get ahead and this is exactly what Zeratul had to do on this map. He has to pressure this top lane. Look at the ammunition left available for the structures for Blank on the top side. Blank has to force something bottom or else they're just going to straight up just lose this engagement. They decide to trade it for the, uh, the siege camp. Yeah, so they get full value over to Firm Handshake by having that pressure top. I mean, they'll have the siege camp and they can try to make something happen later. Nice dwarf toss. Vestage just gets out of there. Levels is down mid as well. Kobe21 gets the bottom shrine. Both are claimed uh, by firm handshake for the moment, but I don't think either team are really going to try to come away with Dragonite this early. No, definitely not at this point so far. Um, we do see Netherwind picked up for Kael'thas as well. You know, he's uh, looking to get extra mana off the gravity laps. And again, we do see the rotation coming up for levels on the Zeratul, but it's just not quite there. D Steves and Levels have been trying to really minimize the siege value that Auraragi gets out of Dahaka. Successfully so, but down in the bottom lane, this, this could be important. a potential matchup to consider. Siege camp has made its way across, and it's been hard for Necromonger Jacoby to really step forward to do anything about this camp, so maximum value. Vestas does rotate down both these teams, not level 7 just yet, 3v3 really three in the bot lane. This has been a very even game so far, Colin. Very much so. I, I, again, I said, like, um, Blank needed to force bottom there, and they almost get two towers off of it. So excellent call by Blank to force the issue on the bottom lane. We saw so many regrowths going out onto the Siege minions as well from Heyo. Smart decision that, to keep them healthy is, uh, in addition to them pushing. Uh, levels of taking a little bit of damage from the Anubarak in the middle lane, but not enough to uh, cause any concern. Yeah, I mean, that's something that you don't see a lot of teams do as far as keep the camp alive, but a nice amount of damage goes in on Ball and Beast. Heal is going to be there from Heyo. Vestige gets <laughs> healed up. Got some armor for the moment. Level 7 should be here a hair early for for Man Shake, I think. Yeah, they get it. Yeah. And uh, the Hand of Protection chosen for the Uther, so the, the new cleanse talent, his auto attacks reduce the cooldown by five seconds. So he's looking at getting in there, reducing the uh, the timer on that cleanse as much as he can. A uh, little bit of an engagement mid, and the counter engage comes out, and actually no Dwarf Toss available. Uh, Vestige takes so much damage, and he goes down in this mid lane. First takedown, Vestige does go down. Nicely done by the members of Blank. Aoragi just misses the drag. I'm wondering if Uther's gonna end up regretting that decision at level seven. Uh, we, you know, cleanse if it's played properly with this talent, it'll be up more often than not. But even last week, Kyle, we saw the value of that armor talent at seven. Yeah, absolutely Ooh. agree with you. That's top Vorpal is, <gasps> oh, he doesn't even, nice. Follow-up damage from the boomerang secures the kill onto top lane. They're gonna be able to uh, cap this top shrine and then also push this wave, plus grab both of these towers, unless I'm mistaken. 
it feels so bad to be Dahaka when you burrow and you come up and you see that hammering fly mm-hmm. right at your face. <laughs> that Good is going to be... Sweet world. <laughs> yeah. First take down, firm handshake to show they know how to get kills as well. Aragi back to business, burrows up here, tries to get this top shrine. D Steve's like, eh, you, you can hang on that for a moment. That, that, that's fine. That's fine. And that's the difficulty of picking uh, Dahaka without having the Zeratul off the table because of this, um, you know, the ability for Zeratul to serve as a pseudo global. Um, mm. And we're seeing that show up. So really good job on the Zeratul for pressuring top. But we do see a response bottom lane. So like, look at this experience. This game has been so even. We've seen one kill on either team. Uh, and Honestly, we're probably just going to see an explosive team fight, which I actually do give over to Firm Handshake. I thought the lane was going to go a little bit um, more in Blank's favor. I agree. I mean, this has been the definition of an even match. Stun goes in on Dr. Frost, who does endure, thanks to the healing from Malfurion. Vestige 8, a good amount of damage off of those shots. So he starts to back away. Stormbolt goes in. Ball and Beast with Araragi, who burrows down. Almost surprises Kobe 21. Vestige Ooh. again finds himself low. The cleanse is going to be there. Orb flies across as well. Level 10 is picked up first for Blank, but it's right here. The firm handshake act. And that was such an excellent uh, Verdant Sphere gravity lapse, securing three stun targets. Um, and now Falstad, because he forced the teleport, is just able to push this top lane for free experience. The uh, the web goes out onto Zeratul. Uh-oh. Oh, oh nice fly. DC flies in Thank right as the... Look at this. Teamwork. Use the buddy system. <laughs> Falstad flies in, saves levels. That could have been a little awkward for Zeratul, but Ball and Beast and the crew are going to take back the bottom shrine. This has been the definition of an evenly contested game so far. Yeah, neither team's willing to really, you know, push out and give too much in terms of uh, to, to fight. Uh, actually, as I say that, there's a little bit of a skirmish going on to this bottom lane. Uh, Void Prison is still available, so... It you know, he might try to force the issue here, but, you know, with both of those shrines, Cap might not try to do that. Vestus hangs out forward enough to eat a good amount of damage, but he is able to dwarf toss out and get healed up. In the middle lane, levels finds that Grizz knows how to apply pressure on a new Grek. Aragi and D-Steves again walk around this corner and find themselves locked in the grips of battle. Aragi position and seeing if he can find that drag. No, he can't. And Look at this, a, though. a dual mid, too. This is so funny. I mean, there's war going on all over the map. The Storm Ball misses. Vista shows his positioning. Not able to get that surprise engagement he was looking for. Kobe 21, Necromonger tries to step in and add some support to their teammate. The long range gravity laps. Lands on Ball and Beast. No lethal damage just yet. Vestige has to use the Avatar to save himself. Levels does show up. Both of these shrines are now picked up. The Void Prison goes in. Oh. Levels backs away. They don't have any real follow up. Burrow goes in, Grizz shows up, Dwarf Toss on Ball and Beast, Stormbolt would have missed Teleport or not. Starting to swing back in a way of blank. So the uh, the Void Prison basically just interrupted the Twilight Dream because it came off as soon as the Void went down. So they pretty much just traded one Heroic for one. They're both pretty much equal uh, durations. So And actually Falstad getting traded out by the Dahaka on this top side. So Firm Handshake looking to try to make something happen here. You know, they're losing both of these shrines. They need to, to try to either um, decap one of them or, or force a fight somewhere. So, again, though, experience completely equal. It's been really fun to watch both of these teams play at each other. Like, there was a moment where I felt Blank had the upper hand. There were a lot of low health bars on the side of Firm Handshake, but it didn't pave the way for, you know, any takedowns or the Dragon Knight. These Steves and Aragi. I mean, they, they've they've been just going at each other all game. Knock up on Vestige into the orb and magic missile damage. D Steve wants to get himself involved. Level shows up, gets some pressure in on Heyo. Potentially leaves himself isolated. Ball lightning getting a good amount of value. The burst is absolutely serious on Dr. Frost, but no takedown just yet. There's the cocoon. Necromongers is able to get out thanks to that mighty gust. Grizz gets the stun, gets the timeout from the Uther. Vestige is able to jump out, get a heal by Kobe as well. No takedowns, surprisingly. Mid. Uh -oh. Dahaka mid just walked into this lane and picked up the, uh, the Dragonite. Oh, honestly, that cleanse from Heyo was absolutely perfect onto Cassia. She would have been dead like every single time. So really good play by the Malfurion there. And yeah, the Dragonite is picked up for blank. A bunch of heroics used across the table, but let's keep in mind, um, Void Prison is still available. So if blank decides to commit to one of these forts and push out pretty far across the map you know the void is definitely there 
as is Divine Shield, which definitely saved the bacon of someone on the back line or front. But this bottom fort is definitely going to get taken down by Blink, so they'll start to get ahead in structures and potentially even experience. 30 seconds left on this Dragon Knight. One punt goes in. These thieves will have Mighty Gust up in a few seconds. The, the uproot goes in from Grizz on to Vestage, who's hanging out still on the flank. But they're going for the tower in a small wall. Araragi continue to put yeah. pressure on. A firm handshake need to look at hard engaging on this fight because Blank are in an awful spot here. Araragi positioned up super far. Uh, we're going to see a void. Vestas jumps in and really tries to get this party started. We see the Void Prison. The Cocoon goes down as well. A nice drag on Vestas with the lowered armor. is not going to get a takedown on the Dwarf. Aragi starts to back away. These thieves continues to chase. Vestage jumps in with next to no health, really relying on that potential divine shield. Grizz is low as on health as well. You know D Steve is really thinking about that fly mighty gust. Yeah, he's out. looking at it for sure. The gust is available, divine shield is available. Uh, but also we have to keep in mind the Twilight Dream is back up now. So I actually think this fight goes over to blank. There's just a little bit of a missed opportunity there. Vestage took too much damage before the void prison dropped. I agree. Like, he was just jumping there, getting chunked down for free. And we saw right there again, he got clotheslined by the orb from Li Ming. Ballin Beast tries to get something to happen. The Divine uh -oh. Shield gets pulled out arguably early to drag into the Twilight Dream. Kael'thas gets ripped off the board. Vestige is the next target. Does he have door toss? He does. Just manages to avoid the burrow. Somehow, he's still alive. Yeah, that, that was a really ambitious Dwarf Toss to try to contest the neutral camp there. Oh, and as I say that, the Cocoon goes out onto Vestige. I believe he has Dwarf Toss, but there's he's surrounded by five members of Blank. I don't see this Dwarf getting out anytime soon. The Root, the Stun, the Root, the Stun, the Lockdown Murder <laughs> gets blown up. And yeah, his ambitious play, like his perceived impatience... He's just like, all right, guys, this is happening right now. I'm tired of playing this even-paced game. Like, I'm just jumping in. It has not paid off for Firm Handshake at all. I completely agree. Um, yeah, I, I think this all just points to the fact that there's just no follow-up for that Void. Um, you know, we didn't see any KT damage off of it, and Grizz was so low on the Anubarak, right? Like, that, that fight almost went over to Firm Handshake, but it just wasn't quite there. I agree, and, and now off of these decisions, the bottom keep is potentially in jeopardy. Grizz is just trying to force back that potential flank. That's buying time for Kael'thas to have a whole bunch of siege damage. That Bruiser Cam got evaporated, so a good amount of damage gets put on his keep, but uh, thanks to the wave clear, no catapults just yet. Yeah, and uh, 16's available for Team Blank, so it's going to be difficult for um, Handshake to force any sort of issue right now, so they're just looking at... Uh, you know, trying to pick up their 16s, but now Ooh. both shrines captured. Looking at this Dragon Knight, these thieves really did what he could. Our Ragi, given the circumstances, Dr. Frost starts to channel the Dragon Knight. Any interrupt from Grizz is gonna be there for the second Dragon Knight. The cocoon locks in one member. Necromonger's is like, Well, bye con Dios, whoever's in there. Twilight Dream <laughs> into the Divine Shield, though. So, Merton is gonna be able to get out of there, and the Avatar. Potentially jabated, Ball wow. and Beast is going to try to get out of there. Levels continues to chase him down, not able to get the takedown just yet, and he himself has to get out of dodge. That was so close for being uh, down a talent, so uh, I, I think Blank is just, you know, they're just looking right at this bottom lane. They want to pick up this keep so that they can have that pressure bottom with Dahaka the whole game, but uh, again, they're positioned really far up and Void is available, so if for some crazy way, or if some... Something happens and Firm Handshake's able to get 16. You know, they do have the Void available, but the dive Ooh. goes in onto Zeratul and he gets caught out, Haloran. That takedown might spell the beginning of the end. 41% on the Dragon Knight. Level 16 is not here exactly yet. 17 seconds left here. They do. They decide to back away, though. I guess if yeah. they got another takedown immediately after, they could have potentially looked to end the game, but without having to worry about Void Prison that, at that moment, I might have decided to hang around and see what else I could find. They get the drag, though. They get the knock-in on Vestige, who does Dwarf Toss out of there. Gets cocooned after using the stone skin. This does actually buy Do you time heal for in a cocoon? potential save. I don't yes. think it's going to matter. The follow oh, what? Vestige wow. somehow gets out with his face intact. Oh, my thanks gosh. Thanks to a mighty gust. I am surprised. But now we know. I didn't know that you healed while in cocoon, so that's useful information. Uh, I can't believe he survived that. That's insane. Uh, <laughs> Blank now looking at 
probably just trying to pick up their level 20s before forcing any other fight. I would expect them to play extremely safe. So they're picking up their camps, uh, you know, just probably trying to soak these waves, look at their level 20, and then try to force a fight because, let's be honest, Firm Handshake has a ways to go before they get 20. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be the most passive play I think we'll see out of them tonight because the next team fight they lose is going to cost them the game and the series. If they want to have any hopes forcing out game three, their next offensive gesture has to be measured and precise. Siege Camp is going to get picked up by both teams. It's already made its way across the map for the members of Blank, though. Find themselves in the driver's seat, all considered. Yeah, so Spell Shield again for the Zeratul. He sees the Li Ming and he's giving a lot of respect to it. I'm not 100% sure if that was, you know, entirely the right call here, but I uh, also wanted to point out the Giant Killer and auto attack focus for the Falstead. He's looking at killing the Dahaka and Anubarak, so. Um, yeah, I basically, <laughs> Firm Handshake, they're, they're going to be looking at forcing a fight as soon as possible. I mean, Vest is just throwing these Stormbolts out on the hunt. Doesn't find anyone there, but the Bruiser Camp is going to get picked up. 17 seconds for the next Shrine Phase activates. And at the very least, Colin, this Dragon Knight is going to have to go over to Firm Handshake if they want to turn this around. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, they were looking for a fight on the bottom side of this map and basically allowed Blanks to Haka to push in uh, almost uncontested. So, uh, you know, the Falstad did go up top now to deep push, but uh, that's a lot of pressure alleviated now as, as to Haka is probably just going to walk up and capture this shrine for free. Uh, I definitely think that's what exactly what's going to happen. Only a level away before level, before level 20 gets picked up. Here we go. They need to force a fight onto Haka if he stays this far up. Well, in the mid lane, really we see Vest is getting potentially called out once again. Does get healed up. Uther is going to be there. Kael'thas on the flank throws down the Phoenix, so no Dragon Knight for you just yet. And the top lane levels in. D-Steve's warring against Araragi. The Mighty Gust does whiff. That's an opportunity for those animated thumbs up, I suggest. The, the drag almost gets the takedown on levels. He has been going to war with these two heroes. And the Jabate goes in. Dahaka does go down, but so does Zerith. Araragi played that almost perfectly, but uh, D Steve's now in a lot of trouble. The Divine Shield goes out, but oh, it's so oh, much damage oh, with the Gravity Labs goes out on Cassia. Keep in mind, Grizz is also chunked out, and now they just managed to kill the uh, the cocoon on the backside of this fight. That was exactly what Firm Handshake wanted. It's what they wanted. It's what they needed. They yep. needed to get those takedowns before level 20 comes in. They could potentially come away with this Dragon Knight, install the game out long enough to get their Storm Talents themselves. Vestige is doing everything he can to hold on for Necromongers to get this Dragon Knight. And he holds second, the third Dragon Knight in the game gets picked up by Firm Handshake. They got their stall. Falstad needs to fly back, or, or back, I guess, and just de-push because they have three catapults. And now this Dragon Knight just needs to look at grabbing these uh, towers, as many of them as he can. You need to close that gap. You need to get that level 20. And now we have a game. We have a level 20 versus level 20 as long as Firm Handshake plays it smart. That, okay, that, oh my gosh. The Divine Shield top on the Falstad actually just changed the game. Actually just won them the game because that was the deadest bird I've ever seen in my entire life. That um, <laughs> that uh, Divine Shield allowed Falstad to fly bottom and capture bot while Muradin stayed top, used his avatar um, to stay alive on that top front to ma maintain the um, the cap in their advantage. And then Kael'thas was able to rotate mid and capture the Dragonite. So perfect play from Uther. Nice job, my dude. Absolutely. I mean, Uther's been out of the meta so long, people easily forget the value of Divine Shield. Like, that's an instantaneous invulnerability on a single target, and that could be the difference maker against a team that specializes in burst damage on a single hero. Like you said, that saved the game for them and paves the way for them to buy enough time to get level 20 themselves. I mean, Dahak is pushing in top lane. Literally, that's just a free creep wave. We're walking top. <laughs> We're getting that level 20. Uh, this is a 20 versus 20. And I said earlier that I really wanted to see this. Hey, they're just letting the wave crash in. Don't do that. There you go, Steve. There you go. So yeah, we're getting what? that 20 versus 20. And these team fights are so exciting all the time, Haloran. Oh, from beginning to end. I mean, level 20 does finally get picked up. So that was a op potential opportunity for a fight to be forced with a tier advantage. But. Vestas jumps over. He wants to get this party started. A lot of damage goes in. A well-placed Phoenix confirms the engagement. 
Dr. Frost gets forced back along with three other members. Aragi and Grizz. Thank God they're the Warriors because they have the Choke stand or do they? So that burst goes in. The Storm Bolt is, is not perfectly timed. Aragi is able to get out of there. Levels on the chase. Void Prison goes down. Vest is going to try to step forward. Ball and Beast trying to get those orbs over oh the wall. A new brat goes down. The Twilight Dream is not going to save the teammate. But now Heyo's caught forward. He's not going to be able to escape. He shouldn't be. But the nice wave of force might have a thing or two to say about that. Levels is going to be able to secure the team down on Mount Fearing. Firm handshake. You're turning this around. That was... Okay. The Okay. I, I can't believe that Blank decided to take a fight there. Like, they should have just immediately backed off. Fighting in a choke like that against a kill Thos, you're just asking to lose that game. But I think they realized it a little bit too late. We did see the reluctance to continue the team fight. But I, like I said, I think it was just a, just too late. They took so much damage from kill Thos. Uh, the Void Prison also on the Anubarak to secure that one kill. And then it snowballed into the second because Heyu still the, stayed a little bit too long to try to save his... Uh, is a warrior buddy yeah and you're only gonna get maybe one more mistake like that if you're on the side of blank before you're yep. looking down the barrel of game three the only thing what's really working in their favor is how much ahead they are in siege i mean there's still going to be a fort and a keep to go through in any lane even after losing those two heroes the defense holds thanks to ball and beast firm handshake hasn't even gotten a port yet it's true, but the variable that existed the last team fight no longer exists on this fight because um, Firm Handshake actually has lane control on this bottom lane, so they don't have to worry about backing up and clearing four waves in order to you know maintain 50% advantage. Actually, as we say this, the Dehaka teleports bottom and starts taking massive damage, and here's another team fight. Anticipated was that Burrow. Vestige gets yanked with the drag. The follow up there, Grizz trying to lock in Vernon, and they get the takedown before Divine Shield even gets pressed. That's huge. This is actually massively scary for a Firm Handshake because they have an open keep. There, there's the front, the main front line down on the side of Firm Handshake. The Dragon Knight is here. Falstead has the presence of mind to fly top. The game of musical shrines begins. There I go Where bottom. They just have to stall this out. Yeah, Zara. Zara. Oh my gosh, that's actually so smart. Uh, Araragi teleporting top. That is that basically just bought uh, from Handshake some more time. Yeah, I mean every, every the more time they can play this game of musical shrines, that's gonna buy time for Merton to come back and neutralize losing that hero at that critical juncture in the game. Yep. Levels does back away. He has no choice. Grizz is gonna start to cap this bottom. Shrine, Aragi continues to hang out. No one is going to be there, though. So now Aragi... But flies available her, again. But so now he flies up. I, I feel like Aragi needed to stay there and hang on to that yep. top shrine. They could have had someone else get in there. That was a pretty big decision they got me. I mean, you can't do that against the uh, epic Mount Falstead. That's, he's so strong at level 20 on this map because of this. Exactly what we're seeing here, as you called it, the musical chairs. So, and I mean, that one pick got them nothing, Lauren. Right, because now Murnin's back up. If anything, if if Dahaka's gonna do that, don't show yourself after you burrow. Like burrow on the left side and, and don't pop out. But Vestige again, a little bit of deja vu potentially. A huge wave of force displaces members on the side of Firm Handshake. The mighty gust goes out. Twilight Dream is still available. Ball lightning bouncing around on Firm Handshake, getting a ton of value. Forces to split from Necromongers and levels to finally negate that. Vestige jumps over. Low health bars though on the right side of the map. And it looks like Blank is forced back to members of Firm Handshake. Yeah, so Firm Handshake just took a little bit too much damage there. But again, we see the fly bottom to decap. And, and now the members of Firm Handshake are just going to be able to heal up that uh, health bar differential and basically get back to zero and look for another team fight. Yeah, this is one of the most aggravating things for me in Heroes of the Storm when the team, when the enemy team is just flying around the map, stalling out the Dragon Knight with this kind of global pressure. Oh. But Vestas gets caught, rooted everything else the twilight dream comes in just a hair late so the cleanse is able to get vestige out of there ball and beast channels the dragon knight and the zoning is there with the bottom keep down this could be the beginning of the end dragon the dragon knight is not able to get the kill we see vestige able to get out of there with the timed dragon with the uh, divine shield thin margins in his game but there's so much uh damage now gone for blank because that is the Li ming right yeah, I mean, that's the poke damage. They're, they're buying the farm on this Dragonite. They're hoping they can end the game, but I don't know if they have the tools to do it with Li Ming locked in there. 
That's an incredibly early gust too. So at this point, Blank are just looking to put as much damage onto this core as possible. They're you know they're smashing on it on the backside with this. Oh, and the VP actually comes up to stall. Oh no! Malfurion gets taken down with the Void Prison to save the core and lock down a noob wreck with no support. This becomes a very precarious progression of events. The core is down to 50% and falling. Grizz. Dr. Frost, Araragi wailing on the core. The Dragonite comes that's out. It. Yeah, that's going to be it. There's enough damage. 24 wow. minutes. That Dragonite did too much damage. Nicely done, but man, what uh, a game. What a game indeed. Um, I think the Gust came out a little bit too early at that uh, on that last point there. But um, excellently played by both teams. You know, Firm Handshake held on for so long, and they played their early game so well into what I consider to be a little bit of a laning um, mismatch. So really good job by them and they showed up today yeah i mean I, I don't know how long this team has been together i don't believe i've had the the pleasure of casting them before but if they continue to play at that level they're going to be a team that makes waves in the amateur scene for sure like yeah level levels of zeratul i don't know where this guy came from yeah that guy's but a hot zeratul it's been a ton of fun to watch but i mean blank's resiliency they saved a 3% core on Infernal Shrines. One of the most exciting games I, I've seen in Heroes Height. That was intense. No hyperbole. Nice. So if, if I'm if I'm on the side of firm handshake, I don't feel bad at all about how this how this night went. I mean, you pushed no. your way to the finals and blank are no slouches. Like Grizz is a, a number one grandmaster tier player. Like those are experienced players that they're going up against. It was amazing to watch. It was very true. Yeah. Really, really good from both of those teams. So we're, we're going to have an interview next. We're going to speak to uh, someone on the side of Blink. I, I really want to ask them some questions. I, 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 I want to know. It looks like we're going to have uh, uh, Grizz. You, you know this guy, right, Colin? I've never heard of this guy. Yeah, no, I'm just joking. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine. Yeah, Grizz, Grizz is really cool. Like, I, I got to meet him uh, – a couple of times now when i when i did heroes at the dorm and i was in california uh he was there for the first time ever at korean barbecue oh. so that was cool and then and then i got to see him again at the dorm finals uh so I, i'm i'm really excited to, to hear what he has to say about this set because that, that 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 was a game that, that was a couple was. of games yeah but i think we got him here i think he's here in the channel now grizz congratulations on that victory man that that was a, a hotly contested series yeah, that was pretty intense. Those were some pretty intense games. Um, just kind of going back and forth. So my, my my first question for you, Grizz, tell me what the voice comms were like during that core save on Infernal Shrines. Because we, we were saying you were the MVP for, for landing that cocoon and, and those interrupts and, and setting up that takedown on Kerrigan. That had to be a very coordinated progression on your side. Um. Yeah, it was uh, kind of went all hands on deck there really for uh <laughs> for the core defense because they were calling that they were getting pinched on shrine so mm -hmm. i made the call that i was actually going to finish the punisher and then just tp back because they were tunneling so i actually got my back off inside the shrine and then i said i was going to tunnel the variant because he was pretty much the only threat to us because i knew everybody else was just going to go for core so i wrapped the only thing that could really slow us down and then just tried to uh cc everybody else so good oh my gosh i really like that decision making because uh, you know uh, another player would have been like hey we need to like cocoon their main damage and and not consider the idea of like in this moment we need the more worried about what will stop us from doing what we're doing and, and you know someone else would have been like hey we need to try to lock the damage down and, and that that decision i feel is what saved that game so so perhaps to you there thanks a bunch yeah it was a lot of fun getting to play today uh bit hectic um we worked some things worked out um you know got suit got through a little bit and um it worked out i mean we worked out with uh like some of our comms definitely got better towards the end so like that's yeah. why the second game looked a bit bit sharper yeah i mean la last question i have for you and then uh, kyle i i know i think you've met this guy before but uh <laughs> i guess my i'm trying to think of the best way to frame well have you guys run across firm handshake before or is this your first time seeing them tonight uh we've actually scrimmed them before we've had uh 
Oh, okay. Had scrims with them only once though. And I think that was like two days ago. It was either yesterday or two days ago. So that was, uh, I, I heard you guys talking about the Zara ban and that's something mm-hmm. that they lean towards. And I know uh, the Varian ban was something that we talked about actually in first map, but mm-hmm. we thought they were probably looking for Zara more so. So kind of forced them onto the Varian and we had a, had a plan for it. Okay. That, that adds a lot of context. I was wondering if you had seen them, seen those guys before, but yeah, that, that was a really cool one. Thanks. My main question for that last map was, given that Dragonshire is Zeratul's best map, well, not best, but one of his best ones, why did you guys let it through? Oh, we, we, uh, we're like 100% confident that they were going to pick it, but um, Roggy said he wasn't going to die top, didn't die top, so it all worked out. We knew that, that, was, <laughs> another, that was another thing that we kind of had talked about was uh, we had played them on D-Shire. was one of the maps we scrimmed them on, so... Yeah. Um, they had run that before okay and so we had seen that kind of um almost three two split that they were doing he was hovering yeah, yeah. a lot through mid and um our team's actually really good about tracking the the stealthies so we pretty much had eyes on him the entire time okay fair enough right on um what is your team's favorite map to go to if you don't mind giving away that information favorite map right now is probably d shower i mean we had map choice for that one so yeah. that should give it away they picked first they picked first map and we took um took. why um we do favor the more rotationally based maps our yeah. teams like i said communicates really well so in those close quarters when p- teams are trying to gank you and skirmish a lot that's where i feel like we do really well as opposed mm-hmm. to maps where it's a lot more lane dominant performance yeah. we like to skirmish Right on, man. All right, that's pretty much all the questions I had for you. I also just wanted to say I'm a huge fan of yours, by the way. Uh, is hey. that the Tempo Kala? Is that oh is that you? Is it? That's the you. that's the Fox of Hats is that right him? there. I hate that's, you so much. that's the guy. That's the guy. <laughs> but yeah, man, very very impressive performance from you guys tonight. Uh, any shout outs you you get you want to give before we uh, round out the evening? Yeah, um, I just. First, like to shout out my team, everybody on the team. Like to give a shout out to the amazing casting staff here, Howler and Kala. Thank you so much nice, for casting dude. these games, making making Heroes hype. You know what it is. Shout out to everybody watching. You can check out the stream at Grizz underscore GG if you want to see me uh, dabble around on some tanks during the day. Yeah, stream a lot. It's cool to check you you out. You you're you're also very informative on that front. So yeah, check them out. Uh, but yeah, man, hope to see you in in future weeks. Hold on to the crown. See you next Wednesday. But uh, have a good night, man. Congratulations. Yeah, take Kella care, best boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bless. What Bless. a fun night of games. I mean, firm handshake. I, I again, I don't, I don't know how long they've been together, but they continue to play like that. They're going to be a team. We'll see shake up the the North American amateur scene for sure. Yeah. Uh, as is blank. I mean. To have the wherewithal to respond to a three to save the core three percent, I mean that that just speaks to a high level of precision, man. It was a lot of fun tonight. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, excellent play from all types of teams. I'm really stoked that we just got to see, you know, that brand new team firm handshake show up and show up so dominantly. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was really stoked on all that. You know, we had some interesting drafts. We saw some diversity come out from them. Um, and then of course watching Blank in in that last series, you know. They, they played really well um, as well. Uh, and we didn't see as much double support as we had anticipated, which I'm kind of <laughs> stoked on. Because, uh, yeah, it was a strong macro play. Actually, mm. a lot of strong macro play throughout the evening. So lots to learn. Yeah. I mean, the, the amateur scene's alive and well. We got teams like Firm Handshake, Blank, uh, Four Guys and a Legend, you know, new guys. Like, it's, it's really exciting to see who shows up. Uh, shot in the dorm, losing bullets as well. But uh, that will round out week three of the Hero Hype Tempo Storm series. Um, as always, Kyle, pleasure to cast with you. Ton of fun. Um, I'm really glad. I, I appreciate the the compliment from Grizz. But it's it's not just us. the The admin team uh, behind Hero Hype worked day in and day out to to make this the best uh, amateur series possible. Uh, thanks to Tempo Storm for partner, partnering with us this series. I mean, the, the, the community response has been amazing. We've, we've cleared our initial donation goal, and I believe that we can get to uh, 1500 by the end of the season. 
uh, thanks to you guys for hanging out. Hope you guys enjoy the the games, you know, as much as we did. I, I had a blast. Uh, so I we'll believe. be here next Wednesday too. Right on. I'll see you guys then. And thanks for showing up, everybody. And I believe you're gonna you're gonna stream now, right, Kyla? Yes. Yeah, I'll be streaming. So if you guys want to head over to uh, twitch.tv slash TV, you can come hang out with me. I'm going to be probably just playing my alt, trying to finish my placement games, and then, yeah, just hanging out. So Playing that new game, Hero Storm. Hero Storm, good times with your friends. Uh, it's, it's a fun game. It's, it's very <laughs> good fun with friend. Yeah. But uh, for now, my name's Lauren. You'll, you'll get to hang out with the Fox of Hots after we host him. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. You guys have a great night and uh, see you next Wednesday. Take care, friends.